How diddly do grade eights? It's B. I'm back. We're gonna do some playing. Let's do this. Let's roll. Page 43. Do it fast. All right. B dot comms are major scale, arpeggios and thirds, all that. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> and do it once slurred and once tongued. <laughs> okay, and we move on. We're gonna do concert E flat major. If you wanna jump down the octave and you continue to, then you can do that. But if you're, you should try to be able to play it up if you can. If you're, you guys should be able to get up there at this level, okay? Just gotta use lots of air, okay? One, two, uh, sorry, so this is number two. So concert E flat major, okay? Same page. One, two, three. That's what you're supposed to do. You're in grade eight now. If this were a few years ago, some of you would be moving on to senior band next year. And I have a feeling some of you would be like, oh, I'm not ready for that. It's because you gotta work at it, okay? So, we're gonna look at 101 really quick on page 26. I think we ended with 104. I think that looks about right. So this is number 101. Just a quick little exercise for our lips. Page 26, 101. One, two, three. Signature. One, two, 
One, two, three. things for you brass players is going to be doing a slurred line that's going up to higher notes because you'll notice that if you're not actually increasing your airflow you're going to be going like Duh. you're just going to get nothing but breath or you get this kind of sound right, and you don't go anywhere and that's because as you're going to higher registers you have to increase your airspeed, otherwise you're not going to go anywhere. It's like trying to um, roll a barrel up a hill or something. If you if you just the, the if you stay at the exact same speed, eventually it's going to get heavier. But if you have momentum, you can carry that momentum to get you up the hill. Okay. We're going to skip 103 because that one is not really important for what we're doing here. And we will do 104, because that's where we ended last time. So, aloepte. Hopefully, you guys can handle this. And by the way, if you're watching this video and you've skipped all the other videos, then you are a butt. Go back and do the other ones. You gotta do them all. Work your way up here, okay? Don't cheat. So, 104. Remember, we have the DC al fine, da capo. So, when you get to the end, DC means go back to the beginning, and play until al fine, to the fine, or to the end. Okay? Fine meaning is that's where the actual end is. Okay? So, alouette. Ooh. This is actually al allegro. Mm. This is the full tempo. One, two, one. <laughs> dynamic settings. Um, we have staccatos, we have slurs, um, and a lot of tonguing, and so there's a lot to go on there. If you can't play to that tempo, do it at a more comfortable tempo, but remember, don't skip the slurs, don't skip the staccatos. You gotta tongue everything where it's applicable. Every time you skip over something that you should have done, then that's, be, that's essentially saying, I'm okay with not doing it correct. <laughs> so don't do that. Okay. We're going to have a look at number 105 here. And so this is a wronged Tilman Suzato, a Renaissance composer. And make sure the no notes that are slurred are slurred and the ones that aren't are tongued. So like in measure three, I don't want to hear da because only half of it's slurred. Da 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 ta 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 ta. One, two, one, two, one. to refine our control, okay? If you don't practice actually doing the articulations clear, then you won't be able to do it, okay? And your last thing that you will be living in is number 106 for today, okay? Which is a lesson for each of you on your own. So our trumpets 
uh, is in 3-4, and it says, increase the tempo slightly each time you practice this exercise. Um, so this is all chromatic, this one. slurred um, chromatic passages, right? Um, and as for our, our flutes, on the other hand, so they're talking about using the alternate fingering for B flat, because there's different ways of playing a B flat. Um, So it's just a different, um, normally we do the B flat, we have that pointer finger in, and the alternate is we don't use the pointer finger and we shift the thumb over from the big pad over to the smaller one. Um, and our clarinet, oh, there's my clarinet book. <laughs> You have a shallow register exercise. So this is all about playing in that low register, getting all the way down to a low E, getting that low E fingering in there. Um, and um, I haven't wet this reed, so this is gonna sound terrible, but. play down there okay? and also have a reed that works. <laughs> I sound like a real reed player. Okay? So whatever it is you need to do, look at it, make sure you can actually do it because those are important skills. Okay. I will see you again next week. Farewell and I, I, miss, I, I miss you dearly. Farewell y'all.